Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant and also the founder of developertoarchitect.com. In today's lesson, Lesson 47, we'll take a look at the channel monitoring pattern, one of those foundational patterns of reactive architecture patterns uh, that most of the other patterns leverage, and that's why I call it kind of a foundational pattern. And so when we looked at the prior lesson, Lesson 46, and we saw in the reactive architecture patterns introduction, all these kind of patterns tying together. What we're going to take a look at specifically in this lesson is the channel monitoring pattern. Now I'm going to be showing a lot of code and also running some demos. You can find all those demos and corresponding code by also going to my GitHub repo at WMR513 slash reactive. So the channel monitoring pattern specifically asks this question within reactive architecture. How can you determine the current load on an event channel without consuming those events? And this from our roadmap that we see within the reactive manifesto really impacts elasticity, responsiveness, and also resiliency. And let's take a look at how this pattern works. And because we have an event consumer that's reading events off of an event channel, and this could be mm, orders, trades, claims, quotes, whatever, bank transfers, whatever that transaction is. And as we get transactions, of course, then we consume them. But the problem is, Generally, we have no visibility, programmatically especially, into how many messages are waiting. And that's what this pattern is. Because what this pattern does is it says we need some sort of event monitor, which can now monitor programmatically how many messages are waiting in those particular queues. Now, we don't only have to monitor messages. Specifically, the channel monitoring pattern is monitoring a specific channel within event-driven architecture, um, event, uh, which ties uh, reactive architecture together. But we can use this pattern to be self-aware to monitor other aspects of operations in terms of memory, uh, threads, CPU, um, all those kind of mitigating factors, connections, and then programmatically react to constraints within those. But specifically, we're going to be looking at the number of messages. Let me show you the issue right here. So we're going to be um, placing some trades. As a matter of fact, we're going to be buying some Apple stock. And notice um, here I'm placing some trade orders and I'm receiving those. And so there's a buy for Apple for 1785, 2217, 2527, 774. Um, my question is, is this trading system working fine? And it looks like it is, and that's the problem. Programmatically, we have no visibility into kind of the metrics or the operations of this particular system. So let's apply this pattern. Let's take a look at this first and see how we can actually solve that problem. And what I want to show you, though, is some of the code first. And so let's take a look at this event monitor because there's some tricks uh, within a messaging that you have to do in order to actually get the number of messages and the number of consumers. And let me show you those. If we take a look and open up the hood to this event monitor, let's take a look at uh, RabbitMQ first, or specifically AMQP, Advanced Message Queuing Protocol, because there is an API that enables us to be able to get that information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to RabbitMQ. Now this AMQP common is a class that I've written. You can find it in my repo under the common directory. But that basically is connecting to RabbitMQ. Now once I've connected to RabbitMQ, I can say give me that channel. And from there, based on a queue right here, trade equity queue, give me the consumer count. In other words, how many consumers do I have currently listening on that queue to be able to load balance uh, the messages within there. But also all I need to do to get the queue depth is to say channel.getMessageCount based on that queue. Now there's another way I can do this as well. Uh, I, as well. I can declare, I can do a queue declare based on a certain queue, which then gives me a handle to that queue. And once I have that queue, I can say get consumer count or get message count, either way. Now that's, again, from a monitoring standpoint. Now the frustrating thing is that when you do this in AMQP, specifically RabbitMQ, that message count will always be zero, even though you have 10 messages there. I'm going to show you the trick when we look at the consumer of how to handle that. But first, let's take a look at the JMS version, because there is no API in JMS to be able to get that message count or get the consumer count. 
And so let me show you how to get the message count at least. Because in ActiveMQ, for example, once I get that connection and start that, now I get a session. I create the session from that connection, which is our transaction unit of work. And now I get a handle to the queue right there. I know it says create queue, but mm, sometimes it does create it. But what it does, if it does exist, is just give me a reference to that queue. Now, there is no queue.get message count, unfortunately. So what I have to do is create something called a queue browser from that session. This unfortunately gives me a snapshot of the queue at that point in time. Now what I have to do to get the message count is take the enumeration of that queue browser, notice I'm doing a browser.get enumeration, put that into a collections.list and then get the size from there. And it's unfortunate that there is no API because this can be rather expensive because it is actually giving me a snapshot of that queue. And so the memory can be quite large right here. Now, JMS 2.0 doesn't really give us any benefit whatsoever because once I get the connection factory and I create a JMS context, I still have to create the queue from that JMS context. But here now, the message count, I have to do the same thing. The JMS context, now I create a browser based on that queue. I pass that into a collections.list, getting that enumeration, and finally the size. And so those are two uh, ways, basically, of getting that within JMS and also AMQP. But now, specifically with AMQP, I have to do something to the event consumer. You see, with JMS, I'm all done. But with AMQP, that is always going to show zero on the message count. And let me show you why. Because I'm going to connect here to RabbitMQ. And now the first thing I have to do is do a basic QoS and set the prefetch count to one. Now that QoS stands for quality of service. So the problem is by default, the prefetch count is zero, which means all. And so what we're really getting when it says get message count is the number of unspecified or unattached messages. In other words, they have not been assigned or unassigned, I should say, messages. But by setting that prefetch count to one, that means all the other messages have not been assigned to a consumer yet. That's what that message count is actually reflecting. Now, I have not noticed any performance difference up to about, you know, I've, I've measured up to two to 3,000 messages, messages a second, and I haven't really noticed any sort of performance impact by setting that prefetch count to one. Now, there's three other things we have to do. When we do a basic consume in RabbitMQ, that's what ties the consumer to the queue. I have to set that flag in the middle to false, and that happens to be the auto commit. Then, once I do a next delivery, I have to do a basic ACK on each message, and that's a basic acknowledgement. Since I have my auto commit set to false, I have to make sure I acknowledge those, and I have to have that last flag also as false, which says, do you want me to acknowledge every message or just yours? And that false says, just acknowledge my message. Okay, so those are just a few tricks to get those APIs to actually work. But it's not overly complex code, and let's see the result now, because what I'm going to do here is now I am going to do those trades again. And here we go. So now, notice, now I'm going to start up a monitor here. Notice the number of consumers is 1. And look at the pending messages, 13, 12, 11, 10. And so now I have programmatic visibility on both these numbers, the number of consumers that I have, and also the pending messages. This is going to allow me to be self-aware programmatically so that I can apply other reactive patterns, specifically the thread delegate and also the supervisor consumer pattern to start spinning up and tearing down additional receivers so that I can run some of these in parallel. And so we'll see those patterns in future lessons, but this is a foundational pattern of reactive architecture. So for more information, you can certainly go to Software Architecture Monday. Uh, there's lots of articles, books, uh, videos, and also that's where my lessons are housed as well. And then if you want to find out uh, conferences or trainings that I'm actually doing, you can go to my upcoming events uh, within Developer 2 Architect as well. And so this has been Lesson 47, the Channel Monitoring Pattern of Reactive Architecture. Again, one of those foundational patterns that we're going to build on and utilize in other patterns of reactive architecture. Again, my name is Mark Richards, and thank you so much for listening.